morning, Branch, as well. Good morning, yes. I hope you all had a wonderful sleep last night and you're all up and ready to hear the word. We have a special guest today. We have a special so. guest today. Let's begin with worship. Father, we just welcome your presence once again. We, we are so joyful this morning to be able to go in your presence and magnify your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, it is a wonderful thing that we can go into his presence boldly. I was just, it just hit me like that. It's like, wow, the creator of the universe. We, we actually have relationship with our creator and we can, right where he is, we can just worship him. Lift our hands, lift our hearts, lift our voice. And he's right there, listening. Amen. That's amazing. And I pray that more others will know the joy that we have, this opportunity, this freedom that we have in Christ to worship our Lord. And, and he Amen. loves to hear his creation praising him and worshiping him. Amen. Amen. From song, prayer, reading mm. his word. <laughs> following his way praise god we worship you lord with everything that is within us today yes we do <laughs> worthy of every song that we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Yes, Lord. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up So worthy of every song we could ever sing uh -huh. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you yeah. the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say yeah. you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe for you oh we live for you and we say oh holy there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Oh. Oh 
it's a God. Oh, we'll see how great, oh, how great it's a God. Yes, you're great and mighty God. Oh, God, God, how great, how great, how great is our God. Oh, Jesus. I give you glory, glory to the King of kings. Oh, 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 and I sing, Lord, oh, how great is our God. Yes, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we are crying out for, for your spirit. We are hungry. We are thirsty. We are seeking your face. I know I am. I know many of the branches here are too, Lord. All over the world, actually, in the body of Christ, Lord. You're pouring out your spirit, and we are so hungry for more, Lord. So, Lord, fill us, Lord. Come and make your presence known. Reveal your glory, Lord, in your church. Thank you, Jesus. Let 
the way of your glory Come. we do not see Yes, I would that you worship me. Yes, draw near to me. Hey, Hakala Mahaha. Draw near to me. Come nigh to me. Jesus, Jesus. Isuira Mahakila Mahala. What could wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What could make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other bounds i know nothing but the blood of jesus oh i call you to come closer I call you to draw near to me. I call you to draw closer, to come and draw near to me. Oh, my blood washes you clean. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, my blood washes you clean. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Today we are going to be in Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Take a little side trip from the book of Job for yeah, a couple days. Yeah, yeah. Um, my question today is, who is our real enemy? I 
wonder. Is it the is people? The is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your children? Is it your co-workers? Is it your mother-in-law or your father-in-law? You know, is it the people out there who um, persecute you, who mock you, who talk behind your back, who do all kinds of wrongs to you? Paul says the real enemies are rulers, powers, principalities, forces, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. The answer to that question is no, they're not. So, and why should this surprise us? It doesn't surprise us. It, 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 it shouldn't surprise us anyways, <laughs> because Paul, Paul could have um, thought the same thing. All the people he had to deal with, especially when he was planting churches, you know, all around the area. Didn't he mention in one of his letters that he fought against the yes. wild beasts of Ephesus? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, think about how he felt when he was trying to plant these new churches and, and disciple and nurture um, the people there. He, he was trying to disciple them into spiritual maturity and he kept coming up against uh, the the Judaizers, Judaizers and who were trying to come in and bring confusion. He, they were trying to say um, the works of the cross were not enough. You know, they, they needed to keep the law for salvation. And they followed Paul everywhere he went. And then on the other side, you had um, the government officials. You had the Felix and Festus at, at Caesarea who pretty much were using him in their petty little political struggles. So, well, do you have anything to say about that? No. 1 Corinthians 15, 32. Paul and, was talking about fighting the wild beasts of Ephesus, but he was talking about fighting um, in the context of uh, the the reality of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Carry on. I just thought that. So, I just, I want us to look a little more closer at the rulers and the powers of this world and the forces that are coming against us, those forces of wickedness. Um, there's another list actually that Paul mentions as, uh, well, let's look to uh, Colossians 2, 14 to 15. Colossians. And he was speaking to the Colossians here. And Paul tells us that Christ disarmed these rulers and authorities. Hallelujah. Colossians 2? Yes. 1? 14 and 15. Oh my goodness. Now I'm really stuck. Hallelujah. Um, and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, that means you're Gentiles, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses right. by canceling the record of death right. that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it Hallelujah. to the cross. And 15. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in them. Hallelujah. So... In him, sorry. Paul, <laughs> Triumphing over them in him. That's kind of important. <laughs> yes, sorry, I misread yes. that. That's okay, honey. So he disarmed the rulers and authorities through the death on the cross, which um, canceled out the debt. Now, I'm not sure if the dignitaries here in Colossians 1.16 are good or evil, though I think it's probably good because in Genesis 1, um, it says over and over again that creation was good. And a lot of people think that deception entered the universe through Satan. Satan's deception that, that's described in Isaiah 14. Can you read that? Isaiah 14, 4. And this is one of the to main, 21. This is the main, one of the main reasons why we're looking at eight, Isaiah mm -hmm. 14. Yeah. What was it? Four. The whole thing? Four to 21? Yes. Just read it out. Okay, before we do it, this is one of the main reasons that, um, what was I going to say here? Oh, 
this <laughs> this idea of creation this that uh, we take it for granted because the orthodox christianity teaches that god's creation is good and is according to the, the word but in the in the rich in the first two centuries of the church there was a real battle going on with gnosticism you've all heard that say you know the secret knowledge yes. gnosticism argued that creation because it was not created the god of the old testament is not i, I will be talking about this when i do my teaching on um, mm -hmm. um i can't even remember his name Oh, it's off. This Abraham? is awful. No, no, no. One of the, one of the oh. first heretics. Anyway, uh, oh, the idea that the old God, that the God in the Old Testament was a demiurge, like a demigod, and he created, and everything that he created was evil. And this is the argument mm. that the Gnostics gave that creation was evil. Right. Therefore, human beings in their bodies, and this we were evil. Uh, we were created evil because we were created by an evil being and this wow. is what paul is <laughs> that's a demonic doctrine. paul is battling he, he, yeah and narcissism appeared very early in the church mm -hmm. and when you read some of these things and the other interesting i'll just add this thing another interesting Plato? thing no. because of the, the very verses that Anne's reading about powers and principalities there was a in, you may not believe this and i just found out when i in doing my research in the early years of the church in the first 150 200 years the letters of paul although they were considered authoritative were were sort of shunned by a lot of churches they didn't use them and you know why because of these very verses because they felt this is what the gnostics taught that you that you know powers and principalities mm -hmm. and all this metaphysical stuff that the gnostics love to throw this sounded an awful lot like what paul was talking about so believe it or not in the first 150 years or 200 years of the church the letters of Peter were the ones that they went to. Mm -hmm. Now Peter kind of has, he kind of takes a back seat to Paul, but I just thought that was interesting. Um, anyway, we are going to start here at Isaiah 4, uh, Isaiah 14. I should write that down. I'm going to write that down later. 4 to 21. 4 to 21. But again, we're here to be enlightened and to learn, to understand. The prophet Isaiah speaks, When the Lord has given you rest from your pain and turmoil and the hard service with which you are made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, the insolent fury ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of rulers that struck the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows, that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses rejoice at you, the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were laid low, no woodcutter comes up against us. Sheol, oh, there it is again. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you. All who were leaders of the earth, it raises from their thrones. And all who were kings of the nations, all were. All of them will answer and say to you, You too have become as weak as we. You have become like us. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol. Mm -hmm. The sound of your harps, maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and worms mm -hmm. are your mm -hmm. covers. Mm -hmm. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. Son of the dawn, I think you should say. How you are cut down to the ground, you have laid nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. Yes. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend upon the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble and who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a desert and overthrew its cities, who did not let its prisoners go home? All the kings of the nations lie in glory, each in his own tomb, but you are cast out, away from your grave, like a loathed branch, clothed with the slain, those pierced by the sword, who go down to the stones of the pit. Like the dead body trampled underfoot, you will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed Stoy your land. land and you have slain your people. May the offspring of evildoers never more be named. Prepare slaughter for his sons because of the guilt of their fathers, lest mm. they rise and possess the earth and fill the face of the world with cities. cities. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> and also in Ezekiel 28, 1 to 19, we won't read that. But 
those of you those of you recognize that these are passages that pertain to Amen. Satan. Is Satan. Amen. Ezekiel twenty eight. The, the deceiver. The deceiver. Our adversary. Do you have those ones in twenty eight? Ezekiel twenty eight one to nineteen. So you guys so, can look that up. I think what happened after the original creation. Um, what this tells me is that our real enemies are those who rebelled against God and lost their original position. Amen. We see this in Jude 6 and in 2 Peter 2, 4 as well. So if you want to write those in. Uh, did you want to read 2 Peter 2, 4? Jude 6. I, I have a lot of scriptures, as I always do. 2 <laughs> Peter 2, 4. Yes. You want, don't want me. Uh, what do you want with? <laughs> you don't want me to read Jude. No, no, no. Hey, Jude. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until a judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of mm -hmm. righteousness, with seven hours when he brought the flood upon the world of the There's ungodly. Okay. So, this includes Satan. And of course, um, He's the leader of this whole host of evil spirits. He's the captain or the leader. And uh, that are now known as demons. And they work in levels of authority. And they all have different titles. And they're highly, highly, highly organized. And very effective. Okay. And there's nothing to play around about. They're very dangerous. Very dangerous and they have a lot of influence and I'll, and I'm not saying this to um, glorify them in any way just beware be sober vigilant right we're our adversary yes the devil lurks about they have a lot of influence and they're very very intelligent not as intelligent as God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit no but they are intelligent and they're in the spirit realm. They're in the spirit realm so they can see things way beyond us. You know, they see things that we we don't even see unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. But they see things way beyond us that gives them the advantage over us. If it wasn't for all the resources that Jesus gives us, that would be something. I mean, we would be defeated and just torn apart. And that's their purpose, right? Is to kill. Steal and to, destroy. To deceive. To keep us in bondage. To steal our faith. To steal our joy. Our salvation. Everything that is of life, they come to steal. And ultimately bring, bring us to death. And how do they affect us as believers? And I don't I don't really want to get into the all the world... Um, witchcraft and sorcery and demon possession because we co we covered that already i think it was a few months ago um well because some of it is just fake fakery as well right baker a fakery is a word it is a word it's like bakery fakery it's fakery you know you can't believe everything you see or hear as being real as well right there's a lot of fakers out there but demons are real this is where we need discernment as the church we really need discernment i want to look more at how the enemies try to destroy our character um, our spiritual lives and how satan seeks to devour us let's look at first peter 5 8 especially in these last days because he's ramping things up. I have never been under so much attack and discerning things around me. Just bang, 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 bang. Just coming at me. And families. And, and I'm hearing testimonies of, you know, pray for this, yes. pray for this, pray for this. Yeah. I'm under attack. You know, and so. And we quoted this before and we've alluded to it. The very famous passage. First Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, Yes. be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone or whomever 
he can right. devour. So First Peter 5, 8, remember that. And all these spiritual forces can uh, affect us directly or indirectly. Okay, by being um, very subtle. And they are very subtle. They work through others. They can work through your spouse. They can work through your hey, children. Hey, hey, well, hey, hey, hey. I'm not saying you, honey, but hey, it does happen more I than know, we think. I know, yes, yes. They work through um, others around us. You know, he, they send people to us who are demonized, who who um, come up to buffet us and, and try to pull us away into other things that we shouldn't be in. There are forces that work through those who oppose the gospel. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. It's Paul speaking, but I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost for a wide door of, for effective right. work has been opened to me and there are many adversaries. Many as adversaries. And that's, it says... That's, that's just before you move on, That's there's two things in there that we should take account of. Yes, there are... But whenever God opens a door... That's right. You can expect that you're not going to... A lot of times you're not going to be able to... Especially when it comes to the work of the gospel, you're not going to be able to walk through it unhindered. Of because course. that open door is like a, a light that goes on and, the, you know, the moths come and, and they come to the light and they're attracted to the light and they're going to come and they're trying to hinder you. So this is a good oh, verse. Yes. This is a good yes. verse for that. Sorry, I just wanted to that. And it says that there are many adversaries, also those who persecute believers. First Peter 5, 6 to 11. Your adversary, the devil. Okay, well, I'm just... I'm, we should have read the whole thing then. Rather than oh. just verse eight. Oh, okay. You're gonna. You want to read it again. Okay. Because we need to make a strong point on this. It's your first Peter. Okay, let's read the. Thereby. Little, remember the three the three uh, rules of biblical interpretation branches. Context. 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 context and context. context. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may, may exalt, exalt you. you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Yes. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking mm -hmm. someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by mm -hmm. your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while... Well, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Yes. To him be dominion forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. What I found interesting is that in the two Old Testament passages that um, describe the fall of Satan, addresses earthly rulers who are seen as being influenced and energized by Satan. And these earthly rulers act in the same way Satan would act. The same way the future man of lawlessness will come in uh, one accord with the activity of Satan. Right? With all powers and signs and wonders and false wonders. And with all deceptions and wickedness. He's going to act just like Satan. That's kind of, um, we, we need to really pay attention. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, and then 9 to 10. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness right. is revealed, the son of destruction. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. They refused to love the truth. And for me, these forces are very real and I don't question it because of my involvement in um, deliverance ministry. I've seen a lot of um, 
manifestation. I've seen a lot of destruction in a person's life um, for several years. And being in this ministry, you, you can count on frustrating problems coming up whenever God's work is being done, even in this ministry. Oh, yes. You know, we come up against so many, um, the buffeting to try and discourage us, to try and uh, cause us to doubt, you know, uh, is this what you should, is this what you should really be doing? Or you could be doing so many other things. Uh, why are you wasting your time? You know, and, and all these, these things, the enemy comes at, you're not seeing enough fruit and the lies and the lies and um, no, no. We can't receive the lies. We have to keep putting him under our feet and carry on and pray for strength. Lord, this is your work. We are your servants. We are moving forward in you. You enable us. You lead and guide us. You give us discernment, Lord, Amen. to see where the enemy is coming in and lying. We have to have eyes to see. We have to walk in the spirit. Right? So we don't fulfill the lust of our flesh. our flesh. And the lust of our flesh would say, oh, you're tired. You're tired now. You don't really need to get up and study. You don't really need to get up and pray. You can just lay down and just lay in bed. and and Or you don't, you know, have to be bothered answering this person back. Or whatever it is. You know, it that's the lust of the flesh, right? Just, ah, never mind. Procrastinate on that. Uh, but we cannot... And we can't label it bad luck or coincidences or uh, normal circumstances, you know, when, when we feel this way, when we see these things. And you ever notice that when someone is trying to break free from some kind of sin or an old way or a pattern or a habit that all of a sudden all these old friends start coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> We've seen it in our own lives. We've seen it in our children's lives, Not definitely, right? Not a coincidence. You know, and, and just when they're starting to get deliverance and they're starting to pull away and get ahead in life, wham, the enemy sends that old friend that they used to smoke up with or carouse around with or they whatever they were doing with back in the old life. In they come. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. And, and at, when we're standing on the outside and watching this, especially with our children we say uh oh warning bells warning bells and then you pull them aside and say uh should you be you know hanging around this person and they say don't worry about it mom don't worry yeah about i'm go it. i'm going to be the witness I, I, i'm going to be the gonna witness, witness to and them what happens we see that so that often. old rule that it's far easier to pull someone down from yeah. off the chair than to pull them up onto that chair and everything seems to go wrong or water always finds its yeah. lowest level yeah, the, the moment the person makes a sincere commitment to obey God, that's when the parade comes in, right? And and, then, and, and that's when the prowling lion sees you and says, here's someone I can devour. Yeah, what do we do in these situations? He may be listening to this right now and say, well, what do we do in these situations? Well, we do what the scripture says is right. We don't let obstacles or people stand in our way and discourage us we just don't and this is what leads me to my next topic that i want to discuss do i have time you have lots of time you have uh, unless you want to save it for tomorrow we don't have to we for an hour need tonight. to put on the full armor as god as god's children we have to use the weapons of our warfare that he's given us it's so important. A lot of us, we, we leave our homes and we get up in the morning and we we forget to do this. We don't do this. Or we put on parts of the armor. <laughs> but unless you have that uh, belt of truth on, you know, your loins gird up about you. And I'll be talking about this. That is the, the, the main piece of the armor that holds all the other pieces on. As a soldier, that was the the um, most important part of the armor, was the, the belt of truth. So anyways, um, I think I'll, I might just leave it there. Sure, we can, we can do this, but it doesn't have yeah. to be, it doesn't have to be a, 
Hmm. We have to put on the full armor of God and allow him to turn things around. I think that's a, a, a natural place to leave it because what yeah. in your question. Okay, now we understand what the situation is. You know, it's we all, see these things happen. Are we powerless to stop it? Do we have mm -hmm. to put up with it? And your point is no. God has given us the weapons of our warfare. We can. He expects us to stand. But we can't stand, if you're in a battle, you can't stand without any kind of protection or any kind of weapon in your hands, both well, defense yeah. and offense. I think the main thing that the Lord was impressing upon me is that it's so easy to look at the flesh, look at other people, to look at the pe people, the flesh, and think they're our enemy. And we, we lash out or... Um, we don't handle things the way we should in the spirit. And then flesh combats flesh, right? And, and it's... And I think that's what God's trying to tell us and they've been trying to... And that's yeah. the thing that Jesus tried, the spirit. tried to teach us. Um, and, and Paul kind of expanded on this. But the idea that, that God is saying, don't look at other people and 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 see their wickedness and hate them is because they're just as Deceived. sinful <laughs> and lost Deceived, as yeah. you are. And they or are word. just <laughs> as deserving yeah. of my salvation, of my grace as you are. Because what does yeah. it say? That my rain falls on the just and the unjust. And the Lord was trying yeah. to make this, this point. Everyone is equal before the Lord, before the throne. Everyone is equal before the cross. And the enemy wants, wants to get our eyes um, on the flesh yeah because he knows that there's no power there's no authority there and the spirit and, and if you're spirit filled and you give into your flesh that's when the spirit starts to decrease in you and that he knows that that's what that's that's how he tempted eve in the garden mm -hmm. so father we thank you for your truth that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path yes lord and it's the, your path that we choose today, Lord, to walk on the paths of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord. Pray that you would illuminate that path more and more, illuminate your word more and more to our spirit. Yes, man, Lord, Lord God. That it would grow deep in us, Lord. It would be like just washing us, Lord, by the washing of the word. Lord God, it would become so real in our life as we go out and do it in faith. It's not enough, Lord, for us just to read the word, but we have to be doers of the word. Thank you today, yes, Lord, Lord, that God. you're giving us a strong warning, yes, Lord. especially in these last times, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm. but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. These strongholds, Lord, that we're talking about, that you show us in your word, yes, Lord, that come against us every day. Lord, help us, Lord, to put on the armor, Lord, and to stay armored up in Jesus' mighty name. It's all by your strength, by your power. Yes, Lord. We can do nothing in ourselves. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, help, help us today. Help us today. Remind us, Lord. We know, Lord, that we fall short of the glory of God <laughs> every day. And we need yes, you, Lord. Lord. We do, Lord. We need so, you. We need the spirit of the we Lord just in us, Lord. Cast everything on you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And we give thanks. Amen and amen. amen. We love you, Father. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Well, have a blessed day. And remember, Jesus is the vine. God is the husbandman. Jesus is the vine. We are his we beautiful, are his branches. lovely branches. And we cannot bear fruit unless we are in the abiding vine, the in true vine so drawing right. from him our source <laughs> so remember abide in Hallelujah. the vine today branches yeah. because without him we can do nothing we can do nothing amen that's become kind of our mantra now not a mantra well, you're, well we're, not we're mantra you mantra. know what i, I mean. know what you, i know what you mean duh i'll edit <laughs> that out <laughs> no you won't <laughs> anyway until Have a tomorrow blessed day. Hopefully you join us tomorrow for part two. Oh.
Don't you turn to the 